what I'm working on at the moment is the second panel. This is a much more complex panel. This is the GPS comms panel. And here we are in Photoshop. We have it uh, I've pretty much completed this. And just as a reminder, that's the that's not going to be very well lit on the video, but uh, why is that rattling? Oh yeah. I've got what looks like a nice tidy panel here. What do we have to say about this? This is a much more complex panel than the centre console, which I have here. And it's going to be much more of a challenge to do, not just because there's more buttons on it, but mainly because this, uh, you'll recall the screen, the uh, VGA screen for the GPS display takes up most of the real estate. And that's tricky because I've got to cut that out of the acrylic sheets. I've got you know, ideas about how to do that. It's not going to be very precise, um, the cutting. So rather than have the display behind the panel, I'm going to have it kind of poking. Uh, it's difficult to, let me just try and show you this. Um, so the difficulty with this panel is mounting the uh, GPS VGA screen, which I have here. Um, it's a bit of a cheap, nasty screen. Well, it wasn't cheap, it is nasty for now. It's good enough. You can see my uh, current sophisticated mounting system is a piece of blue tack there and <laughs> another piece on the bottom. Um, anyway, to mount this on the panel I'm going to cut out a hole which is approximately the right size. My initial, you know, ideally I would have this um, sitting behind the panel but mounted so that um, the hole reveals, you know, the, the bezel of the monitor. Uh, the problem with that is it requires a very precise cutting of the acrylic, which I don't think I'm going to achieve. So what I'm going to do, uh, if you turn this over, you notice the bezel kind of sticks out by a couple of millimetres all the way around. But the idea is to cut a hole that's slightly smaller than the bezel, so I can actually have this, you know, you stick it through the hole. In a nutshell, this is going to be kind of protruding for about a centimetre through the hole uh, so the bezel effectively hides the roughness of the cut that I'm anticipating uh, and it looked pretty good. The downside of that is it protrudes through the hole by about a centimetre which um, I don't think it's going to look the best and the worry is I've had to keep, uh, I can't, you can't see now but um, if I show you on the mock-up wherever that is um, these buttons at the sides and the bottom and at the top there needs to be a bit of separation because depending on the viewing angle you know they're going to be slightly eclipsed by the protruding monitor if that makes sense uh, in this case it's the captions that are going to be uh, possibly hidden or partially hidden so you know there's a bit of thinking to do about how to best mount this monitor. Uh, I'm quite excited about this particular screen because um, it looks pretty damn good on the page. Uh, 30 by 30 centimetres this so um, the acetates are going to be another problem. I'm going to have to join not only do I need three layers of acetates to get the density, one A4 isn't going to cover it so I'm going to have to join, I'm going to have to print print each one in two halves and then join them somehow very precisely. We've got the second panel done and here it is. That's the GPS and uh, COM nav panel. Just finished that today. It took me two days to do this, not including the designs. Uh, Photoshop design took me Oh, I don't know, a couple of couple of days working in the evenings. Um, so two panels down, another five to go. One, two, three, four, five to go. But this is by far the most ambitious and complicated panel of the lot. Uh, there's 34 components on this panel, and uh, also had the added bonus <laughs> of having to cut out the. Um, slot for mounting the GPS in there. I learned a lot about how to how to do this so um should get easier from here on in. Got the right woodworking bits to use on the acrylic and uh, got much 
I mean you can't really see it but much cleaner holes and no cracks. I've also solved or, or at least found the, the best way to work around the panel thickness issue. Um, so I mean it was I had to I had to do that basically. You, you might recall the push buttons, the, the little round push buttons didn't really seat very well on the previous panel but for push buttons it doesn't really matter. Now on this panel uh, deal breaker really I've got the two rotary controls and they've got a very shallow thread on them so they absolutely need to be anchored properly because um, because there's significant torque when you manipulate those knobs. So anyway uh, what I established as the best way to do this is well, basically you cut two holes so um, the basic hole for the spindle is I think eight millimeters seven millimeters for this control and then on the second acrylic sheet behind that I basically cut a much bigger hole so that the body of the um, component sits in that hole. In other words what's effectively happening is um, this component is mounted on the, the front of the two acrylic sheets. I hope that makes sense but um, and again once I've established the order in which to do things that's reasonably straightforward to do. It's not completely straightforward but uh, anyway, for reasons I won't bother to bore you with. So those two controls are mounted that way and each of these seven um, push buttons on the comms panel as well. Um, there's a seven millimeter hole on the front side, 13 millimeter hole on the back side what else can I tell you? Well, something else I discovered on this by accident, <laughs> which is probably a good thing. I haven't decided quite how good it is yet. Um, but when I was uh, printing the acetates for the um, for the background and with the graphics and so on, um, at one point I forgot to load an acetate sheet into the printer, so it printed on regular printer paper, and actually. When that came out, I realised the density um, of the black was actually pretty good. In fact, it prints it prints with a better density on paper than it does on the transparencies. Um, and I decided to try basically using just straightforward paper for the for the background, and that's what you see here. And uh, it's 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 not quite as good. I think. Um, I haven't got the other panel here, but if you compare them side by side, there is a certain glossiness that um, you don't quite see on this panel. Although, you know, it's, the surface is obviously glossy because it's a uh, shiny acrylic, but it's pretty damn good and much less hassle to do because you recall that with the transparency, I, got, I had to print three and then you have to line them up absolutely spot on and keep them aligned until they're sandwiched and fixed in place um, otherwise you get blurred edges but for various other reasons I might I might go back before before I finish I might go back and reprint this graphic anyway because there's a couple of anomalies that you won't notice unless I point them out um, just as a comparison by the way that's the original um, mock-up of this panel um, obviously all the components are being transferred so yeah I've got the comms panel with the, the other speaker panel up here uh, what else have I got? I've got the ADF panel down here. Remember this is input only for the ADF and the radios will be displayed on the virtual cockpit and also the DME. I mean I've still got a lot of work to do obviously uh, but that was the most complicated panel. I might, I don't know, I, I do, I like this one. I, I'm, I'm keen to see this one. This is the, um, this is the avionic uh, rotary controls which, which are also just having a look at the width, the, the thick, at the um, length of the the threads. There, they're going to require the the dual hole tap dancing in cutting the panel, so that'll be a bit of a pain. I'm keen to see this test panel um, how that looks, because because I like those um, sort of missile <laughs> switch cover uh, things. The thing, that's, the thing that's making me slightly reluctant to do this one next is I've got a cut out here for the 
um, elevator trim wheel. Now that's that's designed to fit more or less around the Cytec Cessna elevator trim wheel, which is great. But actually, it's it's not really very much use in the Twin Otter, and the reason for that is that. Um, 